Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, and welcome to our PCI um, seminar on BOAS. You know, um, a few years ago, um, Jane Ladman with the BOAS, which was um, very controversial because it was happening all over the world that dogs, the Brachovan dogs, were starting to have difficulty breathing. Many dogs that were excused from the ring, many dogs were being bred, a lot of problems. So we were, we were it was like a, you know, like a bomb that exploded on the box. And now we're dealing with the consequences. Um, so what we did in FCI is the general committee together by itself, we we formed a committee commission committee wherein. We appointed some people or veterinarians or doctors who can meet and talk about the BOA syndrome. And I was able to ask Dr. Law to join the meet to join the committee. And um, the committee has been very good. They have been meeting a lot. They've been, been meeting on Zoom. They have been meeting also in person. And um, we also had a BOA seminar in Norway where there were dogs who were samples and they were able to use a stethoscope and do all these things. And Dr. Law was part of that. So I'm very proud that Dr. Law is part of it. And uh, it's, uh, of course, it's very knowledgeable with the breed because Pekingese are also black as a that's why he is also a very good person to send over for the committee is because he also breeds the valid dogs. So thank you, Dr. Law. And, um, I look forward to hearing the seminar today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dinky, our club president. Um, let me know if I, you can hear me in the back. Oh, okay. Maybe we ought to dim the lights here on this side. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Not this one. Ito patay mo. Ito patay mo. Yung iba pwede bukas. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the title is, as it says, Boas, should we be concerned? Okay. Next slide. What is uh, Boas? It's Brachycephalic Obstructive Airway Syndrome. Uh, affected dogs exhibit a wide range of clinical signs, including snorting, exercise intolerance, life-threatening events such as syncope, his stroke. And mostly, this affects brachycephalic breeds, but some long-nosed breeds also, long snouted breeds also, develop uh, this syndrome. So it's not exclusive to brachycephalics. Okay? Any dogs can develop BOAS, but nonetheless, the majority of cases are in the brachycephalic breeds like French Bulldogs, English Bulldogs, and Pugs, among others. So, next slide. So, these are the French Bulldog, the Pug, and the English Bulldog. Next. And Pekingese, Japanese Chen, Shih Tzu, Terriers, and, and Boxers, even. Okay. So, next. Uh, this is just a video that uh, is informational, so I just let it uh, 
play for your information. Cats with Dogs short noses, with like, short French noses like French bulldogs, can suffer, can suffer from brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, or BOAS for short. But with treatment, but their, with quality, treatment, of their quality of life can improve dramatically. The word brachycephalic <laughs> is used to describe <laughs> animals with abnormally animals short, with noses. short noses. We see this in dogs we like French dogs and like English Bulldogs, French, Bulldogs, Pugs, and Shih Tzus, and, Shih Tzus. and in cats like and the Persian like and Himalayan. Abnormally short noses Abnormally mean short flatter, squash-looking faces. Squash faces. Because of this, brachycephalic yes. animals are more likely to experience problems with their breathing. Sometimes these problems Sometimes can become so problems severe they need severe. urgent they veterinary, veterinary attention. Brachycephalic obstructive Brachycephalic airway syndrome, obstructive often, airway often syndrome, referred to as BOAS, is common in flat-faced animals. Flat it refers to a group it of conditions group which are caused conditions by their compacted by skeleton their and excess skeleton soft tissue. And excess soft tissue. These conditions, include These conditions include a long and thickened and soft palate, that's, soft that's the fleshy bit at the, the back of the mouth, the the narrow nostrils, narrow which, nostrils which are called stenotic nerves, Averted laryngeal saccules, which is when the air sacs at the back of the mouth are pulled into the windpipe. And a tongue which is too big for their mouth. All of these conditions obstruct the airflow, making it harder for the animal to breathe. Animals suffering with BOAS may experience one or a number of these clinical signs. Snorting, snoring, and grunting noises. Reluctance to exercise. Clear nasal discharge. Restlessness during the night. Retching, vomiting, and regurgitation. And collapsing. These signs are made worse in the hot weather and if an animal is overweight or overexercised. Animals with BOAS can have a poor quality of life as a result of these clinical signs. Their condition can fluctuate and sadly lead to death in some cases. It is therefore recommended that BOAS is treated as early as reasonably possible. To diagnose BOAS, our specialist soft tissue veterinary surgeons first perform a physical examination. The next step is to inspect the patient's airway under general anesthesia, assess the severity of the obstruction and decide what treatment is required. X-rays of the chest are also usually taken as animals with BOAS are susceptible to developing other conditions like pneumonia. For most pets, surgery is the recommended treatment. To minimize the risk to the patient, it is preferable to perform the airway inspection and surgery during the same anesthetic. Surgery involves shortening the soft palate at the back of the mouth to remove the obstruction from the airway, widening the nostrils to enable your pet to take in more air with each breath, and sometimes trimming the laryngeal saccules to further reduce the obstruction. Following surgery, your pet will need to rest at home for seven to 10 days to allow the swelling to go down. Short walks for toileting purposes only are advised during this recovery period. The stitches used in surgery will dissolve by themselves. Nonetheless, it is recommended that you visit your vet for a checkup seven to 10 days after the surgery. Following this checkup and further to any guidance given by your vet, your pet will be able to resume their usual activities whilst being able to breathe more freely. 
It's important to use a harness when walking your dog and to always avoid exercise during the hot periods of the day. Whilst some animals who undergo surgery for BOAS may still make snoring or grunting noises, their quality of life would have been greatly improved. If you have any questions about your dog or cat, please talk to your vet. Okay, so that's in a nutshell how BOAS is diagnosed and treated. But we don't have all the necessary equipment and uh, knowledge of uh, BOAS in, in our veterinary community for now. No? So it is important that we ourselves, the breeders and exhibitors, know what BOAS is and what the signs are. Next slide. So why is it important? Like Dinky said, you know, the animal rights movement has seized on BOAS as a tool to discredit purebred dog breeding and labeled it as torture breeding. It's very prevalent in Europe, especially. So as a result, at least two European countries have banned many brachycephalic breeds. Netherlands has banned 12 breeds, while Norway has banned four, although the Norway Kennel Club has um, scored a court victory in reversing some of these bans. Okay. But this movement may escalate if we, if we don't do something about BOAS, because this is something that's there. You cannot ignore it in our breeds. Okay, next slide. Um, like Dinky said, as a background, uh, the FCI Dog Welfare and Health Committee was established in 2021 during the pandemic and there were members from the different sections of FCI. Um, the chair of, of that committee at that point was Dr. Ernesto Pyro, president of the Mexican mm -hmm. Kennel Club. And I was appointed by uh, President Dinky Santos to represent the Asia Pacific, Oceania and Africa section. Well, we were meeting by Zoom during that time because, of course, uh, we're far apart. Uh, there were uh, members in Asia. Gopi Christian is uh, also a member of this committee. And in Mexico, in South America, and in Europe. So Zoom was the most preferred way of meeting. Okay, next. But um, that, that gave rise to a... Uh, the FCI hosting the first International Congress on Dog Health and Welfare held in Mexico City in 2022. Okay. This is their auditorium. As you can see, it's very, it's very nicely made uh, and it is spacious, accommodating up to 200, 300 persons. Next slide. They even have a semen bank. Next slide. And uh, veterinary college. Next. And this is their office with plenty of parking. Next. A lot of dog art. Sculptures. Next. Figurines. Next. Paintings. So it's a beautiful compound. They even have a dog books like li dog library actually a whole hall filled with dog books so Linky, that's something to aspire for <laughs> next ah they have plenty of space they hold their shows there they have a very wide spacious grounds for dog shows next slide and this is uh wenke lagmo the former president of the Norway Kennel Club, and she is now the chair of the FCI Health and Welfare Committee. Next. And this is James Pernay uh, from France, representing an animal welfare organization. Next. And I also spoke on uh, dog a breeding for health, temperament, and confirmation. 
Next slide. So this is their auditorium. As you can see, it's very spacious. Air condition, very cold, very nice for sleeping. <laughs> Next slide. These this people are sleeping already. And of course, the uh, president was there along with the president of uh, the Mexico Kennel Club, uh, Dr. Pyro there in the center. Next. And that uh, also gave rise to the first International BOAS Conference in Oslo, Norway in June 2021, 20 to 21, 2023. And uh, I was also asked by our president to represent the Asia Pacific Oceania section. And uh, this was a very fruitful conference. Uh, Norway actually spearheading this because they have been piloting the respiratory functional grading scheme for several years and they have the experience and um, results to impart during this conference. That's why it was held in Norway. Next. So this uh, was the first day of the BOAS conference, which were didactic, meaning we had uh, several lecturers, including Dr. Jane Ludlow here. Next. And the second day of the conference was a practicum where vets, mostly vets, I was the only non-vet there, uh, who had to uh, do all these uh, examinations on the different mm -hmm. dogs that were examples of different grades of BOAS. Next slide. And we were given a diploma for that. I was not supposed to be given a diploma as a doctor, but nonetheless, they gave me the diploma as well. Next. So what can we do? Uh, first, we should understand what BOAS is and how it affects our dogs. And from there, we can assess our breeding stock to breed away from the worst examples of BOAS because you don't want that to be prevalent in your breed. Next is to reassess constantly our breeding stock for health issues other than BOAS because they also come with other health issues. Next. Identification BOAS as the video uh, shows is very uh, technical for uh, a lot of these examinations because you have whole body biometric plethysmography, even CT scans, we don't have this for our dogs here. Okay, so what is more practical is the respiratory functional grading scheme, which is a purely clinical assessment pre and post exercise. And these are graded according to their degree of uh, uh, BOAS involvement, meaning grade 0 to 1 are considered clinically unaffected, meaning they can lead normal lives, uh, normal activity without being affected by the BOAS uh, condition. Or uh, grade 2 and grade, grade 3 are clinically BOAS affected, and these have to be treated by the veterinarian. Next slide. So Dr. Jane Ladlow actually pioneered this uh, respir respiratory functional grading scheme in the Cambridge University Department of Veterinary Medicine. And he, she has gone around the world speaking about BOAS. And uh, what's good is she has devised this scheme for us to be able to diagnose BOAS clinically without all the equipment and all the expense that in, is entailed if you go to a veterinarian for that. Next slide. Uh, signs and symptoms of BOAS are like the video said, and we're just repeating it here, respiratory noise, meaning stridor and stertor, and we'll explain that later. Stenosis of nostrils. Uh, a lot of brachycephalic dogs may suffer from slit like nasal uh, spaces and you may have regurgitation and reflux and difficulty in swallowing and eating and of course uh, you can have obstructive sleep apnea and e some dogs may even be snoring while awake okay. 
course, heat intolerance is number one, especially in our country right now, summer. And they can just collapse suddenly and die of the condition and heat stroke. Next slide. So let's see how a French Bulldog breathes normally after exercise. So they're made to run five to you know five to six miles per per hour, and uh, oops, let me get it. And um, you don't hear him, you know, making any sounds while running around like that. Okay, thank you. Next. Now this is stridor. This is a high pitched sound. Okay. If your dog has this sound without exercise at rest, that's grade three, Boas. Yeah. Want to hear a dog? Want to hear a dog breathing this way? You cannot. Uh, you cannot say this dog is Boas. All you have to do is put it be at the back of them. I mean, we're not going to do that. Either. Yeah. So we cannot say the boss or not. So when you hear a back of the public dog, when you're judging, breathing that way, you hear it. You don't have to be that loud. You don't have to be that loud. You don't have to hear the sound. I suggest you put the dog at the back. Because not as far as the dog is here, not the better. Yeah. Put the dog at the back because the, because of the sound. Never put a dog that makes a sound up the front or make it wheel because they will use it for breathing. So you have to make it known that dogs with this kind of this kind of breathing should not be breathing, should not win the show. Yes. Because we can make of this one of the judges putting his face so close to the dog and trying to yeah, I do that. If you know this, I do that. With Bark is a Palik Breeds. He was mm. trying to listen. Yeah, Terry Hudeberg is a vet. He knows his boss. So that's the purpose of him? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I asked the consultation of the previous service. I was able to buy two pet dogs and then. I found out this uh, the brother is a small box. So actually when I bought them, it, it, it didn't turn out that way. But when they turned three years old, uh, it's the time. Yes. And then, um, so two years. Like the nose job and everything. So um, I was able to uh, find uh, a good doctor for the dogs. And uh, after that, they have, they live like 11 years old. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they can so, live normal lives so afterwards. I just like to share Dr. Nielsen is one of the best also in dogs because he said, especially with the French bulldogs, sometimes uh, during operation they cannot wake up. So there is really a, a certain dosage and a certain time limit for him to do mm -hmm. everything. So uh, I'm just sharing that uh, I kind of experienced that two dogs like that. So Thank you. Always had a new, uh, mm -hmm. but once it was, you know, and everything went okay. So, Really, it's really uh, being uh, really uh, carefully watching your dogs if they have something like that because the early detection is much better. Yeah, to add to that, uh, because they sometimes have difficulty eating, they may aspirate their food and that causes pneumonia. Yeah, into the lungs. And to add to the case uh, comment, uh, I would advise the owner to seek veterinary uh, help for the dog. Okay, because that is important for the dog. Okay, so that's Strider. Yes. Grade 3 na yan. At rest, ha? At rest only. Ganyan na. Pre-exercise. Pre-exercise. Next. Next slide. Tapos na Strider. Now, this is Stertor. It's a lower pitch sound. Yon. So, if you have dogs who do that while at rest, 
that's also grade 3 boas right away you don't exercise these dogs that exhibit stridor or stertor at rest okay because they might collapse next slide next slide okay we, are, we should talk about nasal stenosis because that's uh, also important in terms of airway uh, accessibility okay because when you have stenotic nares meaning you have very narrow nostrils air cannot get in and they often breathe through their mouth okay. so they have different degrees of uh, stenosis nasal stenosis from severe to mild and then you have open ones up at the top see how both the alley are uh, open both on the in the middle and laterally you know maganda okay and these are different uh, breeds because they have different structures of the nostrils next slide body condition is also can affect boas because the heavier the uh, fatter the dog is the more uh, they will suffer from the boas okay so you need to check for body condition this is for pugs you can see how they look like when they're lean and just right in the middle and then over at the bard seven eight nine they're very obese and six is five and six would be ideal yeah so uh the problem with pugs is you have a lot of wrinkles so they may have uh, a lot of fat but you don't see them because it the folds obscure the skin folds obscure the fat you have to feel it next Okay, functional grading assessment grade zero. This is boa spree. Okay. The dog is normal. But it needs to, if it's under two years of age, it needs to be checked at two years or more. Like Anne's experience, she suspected boas, the young dog, but not really clinically confirmed. But the thing in two years, that's when they develop the full blown boas next slide so here's a grade zero english bulldog even post exercise okay. Play. clinical signs so uh, we will show you what the mild clinical signs are but 
Again, you need an annual health check and the dog is three years old, just to make sure that it doesn't progress. Sometimes the mild uh, clinical signs may become more severe as the dog ages because of obesity, of course, concomitant illness, etc. Next. So this is a video of a grade one dog. It's running. Again, they use a digital stethoscope. Mm, no, voila. Voila, Tariga. Here, post exercise. I'm in a dito sa That's when you put the stethoscope to the neck. Yeah. Paka repeat lang. Read one. Yeah, may, may sound na siya uh, on, on rest, resting state. It's more apparent after exercise. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, okay. So again, just a little bit of, okay, so that's mild. Next, grade two, this is more apparent now. Your name? Mm -hmm. mm, Strider. You don't hear them at rest, but it comes out post exercise. That's a great tool. Okay, next is grade three, and grade three, even at rest,
Exercise then. Para mamatay. Para na jalo gabi, di ba? So that's uh, grade three. Even at rest, you can hear it very loud, clear, loud and clear. Okay. Okay. So, uh, oops. Now, this is how we do BOAS examination. You have a pre-exercise examination. And again, if that dog shows moderate to severe stertor or strider, Automatically, grade three. Boas, do not exercise. But if you don't hear anything at press, then you do an exercise test. They are encouraged to be trotted at four to five miles per hour or 6.5 to 8 kilometers per hour. Uh, here, it's not possible if it's not an air conditioned venue because, of course, the heat will also affect the evaluation. So you do it in an air-conditioned venue. And if it's not possible due to several factors like osteoarthritis, obesity, or anxiety, fast walk will do. As long as it's within three minutes. Oops. Okay. So post-exercise, the dog should be auscultated immediately. You put your stethoscope like I showed you with the during the conference, that's what we did. And you will have to know whether they are producing stridor or stertor to diagnose grade two to three BOAS. But the, the dog should also be 12 months or more during the first examination. And if it's negative or grade one, you go on to test up after another year to make sure it doesn't progress. If you have dogs with episodes of syncope or cyanosis, even at rest, that's a grade three. No need to do any exercise. Automatic. Okay. So if you have a dog with a blue tongue at rest, ah, uh, that's cyanosis. Next. Uh, the thing is, uh, this is a collaboration between the Kennel Club UK and the University of Cambridge. So. This is their scheme, so to speak. And this is what they advise you to follow with regards to the examination of dogs for BOAS. Um, I'll just read you, I'll let you read this for a while. Dinky, I don't know if, you know, uh, do we need an agreement with uh, the Kennel Club UK to do this BOAS uh, scheme, our FGS scheme? No, yeah, that we have guidelines here. We have yeah. guidelines. Yeah. But I guess... Yeah. Every, every time you judge a dog show, they have, you have to fill out, uh, the judge has to fill out a form and uh, assess the dogs. So maybe in the future we should do this with our dogs. Every time you judge, we have to find breeds. We should not fill out a form, a stoop. How many dogs are you found? You think of the last one. Okay. So anyway, those are the guidelines. Next. And this is the form that we used during our um, 
practicum. So we fill that out for every uh, dog that we do. And this scheme, by the way, was done for three breeds primarily. English Bulldog, French Bulldog, and Pug. Because they were the most affected in the UK. Um, so far, uh, I asked Dr. Ladlow, what about the other brachycephalic breeds? They're still piloting this uh, BOA scheme for other brachycephalics. So that's in the works. I don't know how long that will take, but you know, uh, we already have the foundation with these three breeds that have been evaluated very well with multiple specimens being examined. So we just check out all this. Now we will see, uh, this is how we evaluate bulldogs. So you will see well, for grade zero, respiratory noise, not here, not here heard. Respiratory pattern is normal. You have no cyanosis or syncope. And then you go on to grade one, you have mild or not audible, uh, I mean, without a stethoscope. And then you have normal pattern of uh, respiration and no cyanosis. Yeah. Maybe here in the Philippines, we can start also with our part. Is it from dogs of other things? In the car, you have to put there if, um, if whether it is if the breathing, we start with the breathing, whether it's whether okay or with sound. Whether the sound is grade one, two, three, we cannot say, we cannot decide that in advance. But we, once the dog has a sound, it should be marked already that we have a sound. So at least we are aware. So, for example, when a dog runs to you and you put a table and here you go, please, please, point behind. Because if you put it in front, this shows now that you're making the dog feel the dog. I have seen very nice dogs which I have had in the back because of the breathing problems. Even slight. That's why when you judge practice about the breeds, you have to guess the mirror there. So maybe in the future, in the future you can really say check whether it's clear or it's output. Yes. Only clear it output because you cannot really Diagnose unless you're a Okay. So we can do our part. Yeah, individually uh, with our own dogs. And I have piloted this scheme with some pugs. And um, that was during one of the shows in PCCI. So it's doable. It's doable. It may take, of course, a little time because you'll need to examine several dogs. But, you know, um, actually, if the UK Kennel Club. Uh, will allow it, we can start training some of our vets. Yeah, we can, we can. But also, with us, judges, we have to do our part. Yeah, but you need to know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a good uh, research opportunity for Yeah. A thesis opportunity for And of course, you, you people will have to uh, allow your dogs to be examined as well. Okay, it's not just for that study, but for your own dog's sake. Because <clears throat> if your dog is affected, then, you know, you need to do something about it. Next slide. So this is for the pug. Mainly it's the same. It's the same scheme and the same criteria, but they just, uh, next slide. They just showed you uh, what uh, the different breeds said can be. Anyway, so what are the practical applications of the respiratory functional grading scheme for our breeding programs? Well, with the Scandinavian clubs, especially in Norway, they have the advice that you can breed grade zero and grade one to each other, no problem. If you have a grade two specimen, and of course we don't want to, uh, shall we say, restrict our gene pool, because if you restrict a lot of these dogs, you may not have enough 
you know, diversity, gen genetic diversity. And that's not good either. Okay, so you have to balance this. So they recommend that you can breed grade two with caution and only to boas grade zero to make sure you don't, you know, exacerbate the condition in the offspring. And indeed, when, when I asked them, what were your results when you bred grade two with grade zero? They said they're, they're okay. They're not grade two, right? So they have their experience and therefore they can recommend that. And, and also that's good because we need the genetic diversity. Because if we restrict it too much, baka wala na tayong gene pool to, to work with. Okay. But grade three shouldn't be bred at all. Number one, they may die during the breeding. Okay. And number two, they will pass it on. Although I asked Jane Dadlow, what is the genetics behind this? And she, she says, there is no definite genetic identification for boas as of now. Because it's, no, nothing, no DNA yet. And because that is a uh, morphologic manifestation, meaning it's the abnormality in the airway. So it may be, sec there may be other factors involved other than being brachycephalic. Yes. Question. Could be the anatomical difference of OAS grade 0 to OAS grade 3 when they screen it um... uh, for, for, for veterinary inspection? Uh, okay, you again, it varies. You may have, you know, laryngeal saccules that are uh, obstructing the airway. Yes. And narrowed airways. By the way, if you are breathing, make sure you pay attention to the muzzle because you must have a um, width of muscle to make sure you have a lot of space for the air inside the mouth and the nasal cavity, wider muscle. And sadly, in my breed, it's not very prevalent in many countries that you have weak jaws, very, very narrow under jaws, and that's not good. That predisposes to BOAS. I think a lot of breeds are going through that pipeline. Yeah. And that's... Actually, I know this. When I started uh, seeing French Bulldogs in the rain back in the 90s, they had longer muzzles. Ganyan sila. Ganyan sila. Now it's... Paganon ang paganon. Suddenly, undershot, uh, overshot na yan. That's really bad. Yeah, you have to have a red of the under jaw. Okay, next. Okay, uh, where is this being implemented? Well, of course, in the UK. The Kennel Club UK is now implementing it in cooperation with the University of Cambridge. And in the European countries, especially in Scandinavia, they're doing it quite uh, widely. And now uh, Jane Ludlow is uh, doing speaking tours in Canada and the U.S. and I've been listening to their uh, uh, videos uh, online for, the, for those uh, clubs who invited her. So it is no longer uh, a, uh, an esoteric thing. It's ongoing. We need to you know, adopt it. Next. Okay. Again, this is, this brings me to the conditions that uh, the Kennel Club imposes on this. Although this actually is primarily for dogs in the UK because you have to report the results to them. Um, I'm not sure how we are going to go about our old system here because we don't really have any regulations about this. But I strongly advise that we adapt this uh, as, as much as we can so we don't contribute to fueling the animal rights movement here. Uh, so far, our uh, animal welfare organizations 
I'm not been that strident in terms of, you know, saying purebred dogs are bad, blah, blah, blah. And I disagree with that totally. But again, you know, it's propaganda. And if we have a lot of boas in our dogs, then they will be saying this. So the thing is, just deprive them of ammunition. Okay? Next slide. So, again, thank you for your attention. If you notice, oops, you will see this has very wide nostrils. But this one of my Hall of Famers during your younger years. All right. Thank you very much. Questions? Before you ask Dr. Lloyd any questions, let me just um, say that on December 16th, we're going to have our section show in Korea. On December 15th is Sunday. So on December, December 11th, I think, is the grooming. Then we have the section show four days. And then on Monday, we, have, we are looking at doing a seminar on BOAS, the whole day, we have our seven speakers for BOAS and dog health and how to judge a dog. We have it in Korea. So all of you are invited to come. It's going to be a one day, one day a seminar in Korea, the whole day from nine o'clock to six o'clock. I am fixing it. I am hopefully Jane that Jane Radlo can come. Uh, she has that she's still checking her schedule but we have a lot of other people who will talk about movement in dogs about boas so if any of you would if you want to come we will have the details very soon so this is the monday after the section show uh in south korea I don't think the 7 16. the whole day we will have about seven speakers so as of now it's all a go. Um, we are getting subsidy also from FCI. At the same time, the A two O section will fund everything, okay. and there will be a small fee that you would have to pay to attend for food and everything. But it's a good, it's a good start. It's good to attend so you can learn more because seminars really are very important for us to leave the box. We can't just stay within the box. We gotta leave the box and find out. Now, while you're there, you can also watch the dog show. You can also join. There's also grooming. Uh, the world grooming will also be there. But um, but I'm here to say that on Monday after the show, we're spending a lot, I'm spending a lot of money on, 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 this, on this. So I hope those of you who would like to come to the show can also come to the seminar on Monday. Um, it's going to be very good and it's going to cost you a lot of money, so I hope you a lot of people will go. Thank you. Dr. Lowe will ask your question. Okay. Questions? Mm -hmm. You mentioned a while ago that you need. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Nielsen did a surgical yeah, intervention. Are you thinking about what he did? Was it like a... Actually, because I don't, I don't time, I don't know that. It was explained to me that Bo was the one because it was really just a pet. Yeah, and what he did is, they came out because they were like, but it, after that, parang, nari, parang I felt that my dog was because really? Because he said, it's parang doon, grade, grade two. Parang pag doon, so pong aso na to. Parang, grade three na yun. Yung isa naman, hindi ganyan, pero uh, kasi I bought it from my people. So, he explained sa akin that uh, yung, yung mga, mga, after the population, parang okay. na-feel ko rin that they have a better, you know, they can exercise na hindi na siya yung pag-gising mo. So, was it on the nose trade or? Both, both. Both yun. Both, inside and ano. Yung parang wala na yung parang tabi. They're always tired. Dr. Lok, can you also explain to them that BOAS is not strictly found in Brahma's Yeah. Even in 
in Labrador, sport is everything. Harriers. Breathing hard. Yeah. Please put them on the bottom. Please, judges. We're not pets. But if you find a dog, even a, a Labrador or whatever breed, and they will come. After they run to you and they're doing that, please go to the next one. Or don't put them in the Or what? if it's the only dog, please don't give it the award. We don't, that one. It's, it's very <laughs> Well, of course, you have to consider the conditions, but uh, generally, if you have that kind of breathing sound, that's already a grade three, no matter what. No, because macrophotic dogs have shorter muscles, so they're more prone to it. But even the regular muscle dogs can have it. Yeah. It's, a, it's the same as the dogs, okay? So we should make sure that as judges or as breeders, we don't breed these dogs. And we be trying to breed what dog that's clear. Or, and in the breeding of the dentist ring, please don't give it an award. Just say that the breeding is not normal. Yeah, but you have to consider health, first of all, yes. when you're judging. Do not uh, award an unhealthy dog. After all, that's... You know, we're evaluating for breeding stock. So no, it's not only in brachycephalic. Yes. yes. Actually, I find it unfortunate that it was called brachycephalic obstructive yes. airway syndrome. Because it, you know, it gives the impression only brachycephalic can get it, but it's not. Yeah, in any, in any breed. Terrier also has a uh, different, you know, cephalic configuration, very elongated uh, frontal area. The, the, um, the, 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 there was a problem before a long time ago with judges, dental things. Many judges in Europe, America, and in America, it's allowed. In Europe, you have them, okay? the vaccine sciences. And they ask it there, even if it's small, very small, even very small, because it's going to be a big thing. It's okay. Ten years ago, a lot of Frenchies had no idea. Okay? But now, because it was, we didn't award those dogs, we didn't breed those dogs, we made sure we fed dog and dogger things. Now, you hardly find in Europe any dog without a thing, which is good. So that's what we want to do also with Brachyphalic breeds. Or breeding breathing problems. Breed it out. Hopefully in the future we will be able to breed it out just like the tails of the branches. Okay. Uh, the reason why the no tail is a problem is because it's associated with vertebral malformation, meaning you can have uh, other vertebra that are also affected by that because uh, that the absence of a tail means there is something intrinsically uh, absent in, in that spine. So that tail is actually an extension of the spine. Oh, so, yeah. But FCI, we are FCI. So when you touch a bench, you touch a tail. If you find a even little small, it's okay. You can make much. But if there's really not, then please give it the very good. No matter how good the dog is, you can always have to go through a magic snail. That's why we're able to breathe it out. It's because all of us help doing this. So we have to also help with the drug. Any more questions? Yes. Um, has problem on breathing. And then you diagnose it. And then as we do an interview, okay, is it still recommended surgery? Well, uh, the surgery only corrects it in that dog, but it may be passed on. So again, it needs to be graded. If it's a grade three, absolutely don't use it. If it's a grade two, yes, you can use it with caution. But you have you have to have it evaluated. No bets here can break. The only probably person who can grade here is Dr. Goss. Because he's been through the 
similar to the meds. So if you have a problem, call Dr. Law. <laughs> he, will charge, he will charge you only 500 pesos. <laughs> Maybe we can do that during the show. Yes, of course. Okay, uh, actually, I did that during one of the shows. Okay? Uh, somebody volunteered, so fine. Na pilot ko naman. And um, yeah, we can do it there. Yes, Up there on the mezzanine. Yeah, the doctor law is a medical law. So he can do whatever the best. And he was trained now to do to work like a vet. So he was given a diploma. So he can tell he can tell grade one, grade two, grade three. Or grade zero. <laughs> so, Doc, you can, right? You can already. Yeah, I, I piloted it. So, I find it's, it's practical, but, you know, siguro we can only do like maybe five dogs during a session. Yeah, it can be done. We have many shows, so. Yes, so the doctor law. And maybe we can even have a, a, a paper that says, oh, your dog is free from. Actually, actually, I have forms that I brought with me. So I reproduce it. Yes. We can have it reproduced here. I want. That's, that's plagiarism. I mean, we seek permission. That, well, yes. I think we should do that just to make sure we don't. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. Mm. Mm. If the uh, University of Cambridge allows it, yes. Well, uh, that's to collaborate today. I don't know who has to give permission. If they allow me. Sure. Okay. Uh, I was, like I said, I also gave a lecture on dog uh, health, temperament, and uh, conformation during the Mexico International Conference. And I can give that as well here. So, just remember, judges, when you're judging dogs, always, when they come to you, always, even like this, even put the dog the back. Why? Because it's because we are now being attacked by animal rights activists. We have been breeding hypertypes. In other words, hypertype is too much. No, too, too extreme. extreme. Short muscles, too short, too, you know, too much. Of course, we don't want to be the hypertype, which is really bad looking. Like in Germany, for example. In Germany. You judge in Germany, you will not find a single good dog. But they all have so big teeth, they are healthy, the tails are very good on tough sense, you know, but they lost time. We don't want that. <laughs> That's the other extreme. In Germany, you cannot find any good breeder in the morning, but they don't want that. We want the time. Why are you breathing? 
there are risks you take. You have to take a risk. You cannot just say, I'll be the family doctor, I'll be the doctor. Sometimes you can, it's only a DNA. Because we can bring down positive to a negative and come out with some positive, some negative. So it should never be a positive. No. But with Dr. Bali, there's still no DNA test on the law. It's basically all on the law. So, judges, please help us, help us with this. And the breathers, yes. help yourselves. Yes. So, you be resistant to the no, no, no reject. No reject because we're not pets. Just, just, just. Put it on the back or don't even give it a little. Don't give it a little. Don't award. Yes. Or give them very good if it's an FCS show. Give them very good. If they ask why, I you say because I hear something. If they say, but my dog's not sick, you say, I don't know. I'm not the best. But I can get something. Which is good. Very important. Just say your dog doesn't seem healthy. And that's part of the criteria for dog shows. You must have a healthy dog to exhibit. So you should be very clear in Asia not yet, not yet to that level. But we should let you start. Yeah. We should police ourselves before they crack down on us. Mas masama yun eh. Not only with the all breeds. Was your dog going to you? Are you running around? One round, one round, and it goes. Don't try this, right? Okay, don't try this. Yes. Yes. You know, we are just last week. We are against animal rights. Just last week in Luxembourg. I dream of judge. Of judging American Congress family. He refused to judge fat whiskers. No, I'm not judging one of the fat whiskers. So we are we so we, we don't like that. We always don't like that. We mean I mean that has nothing to do with hell. Yeah. But yeah. I'm a name. Germany is already it's really bad. Soon in Europe they will not have any children. They have banned so many breeds. Soon in Europe so I was against the Netherlands. I openly stated on my Facebook I am against the Netherlands Club and I put twelve breeds, the the Rapid breeds in my face and I Support these breeds because they want the French with the longer nose. You know, they, the the they, the 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 they wanted to cross breed. I said I'm against this because we have to breed all the standard. We should not breed among them. Right? But of course, we should be careful with the Now, with regard to the winters. We are done. That's that's uh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. gonna grow back. The people are right now. Then some judges are pro animal rights activists. Okay, so and they're among us. So we really have to be careful because we are I can say ten years late. What will happen to South Europe will happen to us in ten years. And we don't want them to happen. I think there should be a judge here with some educational yes. program as well because not everybody knows what they want to include. I think Dr. Law should uh, should <laughs> have a seminar for all the judges. Science. <laughs> Every single judge should go to a seminar of Dr. Law so that they will understand that about things. Because we have some judges who think they are judges they know everything. We don't. We're learning every day. We learn new things every day. There are one million things to learn. We probably only know one million. Okay? So we have to learn. We have to keep learning. Every day it changes. Things change. Right now it's health. 
point was that we had to care about health, we had to care about tax dogs. Right. Now, health and tax. We still want to be tidy dogs, but we want to be the welfare. This yeah. is for the welfare. So I think we should make it a good talk about it with Simon that all the judges must go through the seminar on boards. <laughs> if not, they won't be judged. Yeah, it should be. They should be station first. I mean, very important for for the welfare for dogs. It's just like when you when uh, when we 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 two dogs with chihuahuas, and they've been I have judged here dogs, one of the fontaneras, and they're champions. They should be, they should be excused from the ring. When I judge Japan, I judge some of the ringers with open for the Why? It's because they use the chihuahuas, they bring chihuahuas into the ringers. <laughs> That's what they know. So as judges, those who judge, must always check on the continent. If dog has an open fontanella, please, 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 excuse the dog, please, do not accept it. And should I have to judge, when I judge here, maybe in, in the chihuahuas, your job, maybe if there are five or six, six, six dogs that are there, maybe three, two or three have open fontanellas. And in the classes, Maybe 70% open fontanella. And you put them up. Why? You should know that open fontanella should not be put up. It's a very soft spot in your head. It's not safe. And we just show our real life dogs. But not. As, as the dog grows older, maybe you can accept it for maybe a Well, maybe about the latest dog months. Okay, after two months, cannot, cannot. The Fontanella, imagine you have a hollow, and these are their champions. The champions. Sad, very sad. And I've seen people, judges, put up dogs in the So these are things we should be aware of. Because in the future, this will harm us also. This will harm us. It should not. We can make sure that we help each other in the future. All that goes in the No. Yeah. Over here, we don't know what's going In Japan. And others. They, they, they would say they breathe chihuahuas in <laughs> That's why you can see a former uh, chihuahua, a long-haul chihuahua. Very dense coat. Okay. With a billowing coat, looks like a covering. They say the coat that it looks good. Yes. With a very nice coat. When you look at the face of the chihuahua, it doesn't look chihuahua. So you did chihuahua. Like a, it has an outdoor covering. Yes. So both ways, you know. So you will see the chihuahuas in the breed. And the pomeranians in the breed have open for the glass. This is from chihuahua. So let's think about the health of our dogs. It's very, very important. Mm. Which? Judges doing it. Well, it seems to be uh, formally. Maybe, maybe, John, you as a breeder should give a seminar on how to open fontanelites. And these are judges who don't know how to judge the, the fontanella. I mean, with every breed, we have different problems. And as judges, judging the breed, we should know these problems. Because we are judges. We, we create the future. We create those who will be bred to and who will be, who will be we used for breeding. So if you make the, the owner aware and they won't the open for the fontanella 
Chihuahuas would never win. They would not breed open for the dance anymore. So okay. these are the health, health things that we should, we should all be aware of. Yeah. Tomorrow, I would like to thank, of course, you and the community and all the uh, respected uh, officers here and all, all of us for this. That's all. And uh, I would like to ask, uh, I want to thank you because after this, I will uh, set up, uh, you know, in my village in my village. You know, it's nice that if you can breed the, the French Bulldog, I got the idea. So, as of now, we will be more, more um, uh, educational, we will be more educational, and then um, I will coordinate with John. Be more proactive. Yes. yes. Very good, very good example. Yeah, because yeah. then I will find an art area, maybe we put the air con, we can talk and all. But it's like, a, it's like really the, the knowledge is very important, especially for, for readers and for all the players, you know. Who, to be well, uh, well uh, educated about this So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending. Okay. I guess that's it. And uh, if you have any more questions, we can talk about it at the shows. We always see each other at the shows. Thank you.